hydrocarbon base in there, uh, it really opens up a, a, a large new problems for us. Uh, we will also drill in this other sub-basin here in the Omo block uh, of the Chubahar Basin, uh, a, a well called Shamila. Um, we're actually quite interested in this. We've just shot thousand kilometers of seismic and we've seen some, some interesting results. So we will drill a well there. But basically, this the, the, the Polish rig, the, the Hojek, will just stay in this basin for the entire year. And it'll drill at least two wells, more likely three, uh, before the end of the year. So we've got two, three rigs here, one rig here. We're bringing in a, a Chinese rig to come down here and drill in Block 9. The first well we drill is going to be called Mahasi. It uh, used to be called Kinyonga, for those of you uh, uh, who remember it. Um, we will drill that well, but we'll also take that rig and come back to Pai Pai and uh, probably do the test there at uh, Pai Pai. And then we've got a follow-on location called Sala, and I'll, I'll show you these in a minute. So that's rig number five. Rig number six is actually up in the Ogden Basin. Uh, we're drilling a well called El Kiran. Uh, it's not operated by us, it's operated by our partner, New Age, and uh, I'll show you that one as well. So again, the first prospect we drill uh, on the String of Pearls, um, the, the Weatherford rig that's there now has basically finished testing at Twiga. It's moving to Gamia. It should be rigged up and ready to test within about three weeks. Uh, we're going to do six tests there. Tests generally take about a week each. So we're looking somewhere around the first of May um, to um, uh, be able to announce the uh, Gamia testing results. <coughs> I think the ambient testing results is, is important to do. People have asked us if we've already tested in Twiga, why waste time and go down here and test in Gamia? I think it's important to have two good uh, evidences of, uh, of, of reservoir. So I think if we can confirm the same type of test rates and the same kind of reservoir quality we had at Twiga down here, then we're once again feeling very confident. Uh, also should note that the, uh, the, the, the reservoir is four times as thick in uh, um, Gamia as it is in Twiga. So we would expect to see significantly higher uh, combined flow rates out of those zones. In fact, we're mobilizing, we're trying to mobilize before that test um, bigger pumps now that we know the reservoir is better quality so we can basically pump these at higher rates. Um, after Twiga, it's going to go to Kales, which is basically the, the, the one right in between. This is probably the, the best looking prospect in the trend. It's a nice, simple rollover at all levels. In, uh, um, this direction, you actually see some things that look like hydrocarbon indicator bright spots uh, on top of this thing. And then it's a very clean fault and a good roll into that fault. So we think the, the, the chances of finding something here are quite good. Um, you know, we've got 100 meters of reservoir here, we've got 70 meters of reservoir here, so we'd expect some reservoir thicknesses kind of in that range and a, and a very nice structure. Uh, after it's done with the Kales, that Weatherford rig is just going to stay on the string of pearls and just move north and, and drill as many of these as we can this year. So we're hoping to have at least four, probably five of the string of pearls um, evaluated by the end of this year. <coughs> and as I said, we're going to be focusing on the shallow reservoir. So the first well at Kalis will not even see the two lower reservoirs. It will be right optimally located on the, on the shallow reservoirs. It will be a relatively shallow well, around 1,500 meters, so we hope to drill this in a in a, in a much shorter time period than, the, than the, the wells we have been doing. Assuming we see success at this, at a later date we'll come out and drill an appraisal well which will appraise this discovery, but it'll also go down and test those lower reservoirs as well. So once again, we're not giving up on those reservoirs. We think there's a lot of potential there, but we're, we're taking the easy ones <coughs> first so we can basically get enough volume to, to feel comfortable about our development. And then the other rig, the, the rig that's on Pai Pai, as I said, is going to come over here to a two uh, For those of you that remember, this is still our favorite prospect. If, if, if Africa World had been operating here, we would have drilled that prospect first. Uh, it's, uh, we still think it's uh, the best prospect in the basin. Uh, a very simple fault, a nice big thick Platone sandstone reservoir package that we, that we saw in Lopero. Uh, we expect to see that there. And one of the reasons we like it is it's big. It's 231 million barrels, most likely 522 million barrels max case. So once again, thinking about getting the prospect uh, pipeline development volumes, this could be a very key well uh, to get us there. Uh, the other thing we like about this is if you uh, are successful here at Tuco, we've got four more prospects already identified that we can follow up from there. So 
The next well is probably going to be this at Tuniac. If we have successful, at, if we're successful at Atuco, we'll likely move the rig over here to Atuniac, which again is a big prospect. Two hundred million, most likely four hundred and fifty-five million max, uh, with a, 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 once again a good chance of success, thirty-four percent. So uh, we see this as kind of the the other side of the basin. What what Tullow had uh, called the ramp play. For those of you familiar with the Uganda. They drilled their string of pearls on the one side of the basin, then they moved the rigs over and they found the fields called Casanina and uh, Bilgu Lee on the other side of the basin, which is a, uh, has become some of their best fields in the basin. So uh, this will be another big well to watch. If, if, it, if this one hits and it's as big as we think it is, uh, not only gets us a lot closer to the development volumes, but it also opens up this whole fairway uh, on the other side of the basin. But the big one, uh, uh, Sabisa, is uh, the one that I think is our, our, probably our most important well that we'll drill this, this year. So I um, wish I could tell you more about it. We're, um, uh, we're, we're about a little over halfway down on this well. Um, I'd say everything we've seen so far is pretty much encouraging, but uh, it's uh, much too early to make any decision about it. So we're, we, uh, we'll, we'll continue to drill that. We're hoping to announce the results by the end of March. Um, the, 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 the rig will, will basically stay in this uh, in this block, um, likely move to the Tule next, which is the prospect right next to it, and then move over to this new sub basin that we found over here. This one's looking quite interesting. We've drilled, we've got the full thousand kilometers of seismic now. We've got seven drillable prospects. Two of them have nice bright spot anomalies on them that seem to indicate hydrocarbon anomalies. So we definitely will drill uh, one of these well, uh, um, wells this year. So uh, I think the uh, uh, the thing that excites us is again we've got so many leads and prospects up in here. If you look at our resources, 13 and a half billion of our 28 billion are basically in this basin, in the Takana basin. So the, the one we're drilling first is Sabisa. Uh, it looks a lot like the ones in the south on the string of pearls, a roll into the fault. And then in the strike direction, a nice big rollover. We got another one just to the north that looks just like it, so east and north. Um, but this is one we're quite keen on. Oh, sorry. This is one we're quite keen on, which is Tatule. So Tatule is a little different. It's called a horse block, which means it's got faults on both sides and it goes up in the middle. So you got shale on both sides of it and a nice sandstone in here, hopefully. Um, I, I think we will drill that well regardless of what the uh, outcome in Sabisa is because it's a, it's a different trap type and it's a nice, uh, simple trap. So uh, again, what gets us excited about this basin is, is really the number of structures. And, uh, again, I apologize for all the seismic and for those budding geophysicists in the crowd. Um, you, you'll, you'll get very excited, get excited about this uh, as I am. So this is our Sabisa well. This is Tatule. And what gets us excited is every one of these small blocks here is a potential oil field. So if this works, it opens up a whole new province, it opens up a, a, a vast number of, uh, of new uh, plays. Uh, also interesting is we finally shot our first two, uh, the river, the Omo River is right here. We finally got our first two seismic lines on the other side of the river. What we see is a big rollover anticline, not only on this line, which is here, but also on the road line to the north. So this is, this is maybe the biggest uh, structural prospect we've seen in the uh, tertiary basin. And then the other thing that of course gets us interested is you see this basement reflector dropping off. There may be a whole nother source kitchen here on the other side of the uh, uh, on the other side of the, uh, uh, the big fault system. So again Omo is, uh, is really a, a, our sexiest block uh, and I think uh, NDA is, is right on track with that. If we're able to prove this hydrocarbon system you know we, we personally believe uh, the, the value of our company could double overnight if we, uh, if we make the discovery here. Uh, and the important thing is not necessarily that we find a big oil field with Sabisa, but that we find a petroleum system. That uh, uh, we see good oil shows, you know, if there are any sands in here that are trapped, that they're filled with oil. Even if they're not great reservoir quality, or um, um, the important thing is that there is a petroleum system and that there is a source rock. We will find more traps, we will find more reservoirs. But the one thing you can't replace is source. If we don't have good source rocks, uh, we're pretty much finished. So even good shows in here, good uh, uh, wet gas shows or oil shows is a very encouraging sign for us uh, uh, if we see those. 
You might also notice we just signed a block last week called the Rift Basin Area in uh, Ethiopia. This was one we actually had signed a study agreement on over two years ago, and we just converted it into a PSA, uh, Production Sharing Agreement. Uh, the reason we were in such a rush to uh, convert it is if we make a discovery in Sabisa, it probably would have been very difficult to sign this block. The amount of uh, competition we have would be pretty stiff. So this is a very frontier block. Um, it it uh, only uh, has no seismic, has no drilling, only a, a series of lakes that have some oil slicks and some tar reported with them. So again, we think that means there's a source rock down below that makes it a perspective basin. Um, we have a gravity survey, an old gravity survey that shows some deep, potential deep holes that might be source areas. But it's, it's extremely frontier, so we're going to be shooting at uh, full tensor gravity or at FTG in April, and then we're looking to do the seismic survey the second half of this year. This is a block we we brought in Marathon as a partner, so they're going to be paying 100% of the cost of this uh, program to, to get a 50% working interest. Um, they also came into this block, which is Block Nine. Uh, block Nine is a, really a continuation of the Cretaceous trend. So what we've proven here uh, is kind of interesting. Mogal we drilled two years ago, some of you remember, it was a 5,000 meter well. We think we found a gas field there, but it's pretty deep, pretty tight, and uh, we're still, we're still uh, going to follow that up. Then we drilled Pai Pai, which is a 4,000 meter well. Uh, the reservoir was a bit better quality, and we think we either got light oil or gas compensate. Um, the nice thing about Bahasa is that uh, the reservoir there we expect about 1,800 meters to 2,200 meters. So it should be much better reservoir quality and certainly more oil prone than, uh, than the, the deeper ones. Um, and the really good thing about it is Marathon plays 100% of the cost. So we get basically a free well in the, the, in the Cretaceous uh, to test it out again. So um, Bahasi is uh, it's located right next to a good oil kitchen. Uh, we think this is definitely oil prone and not gas prone. It's a big prospect. It's one of the biggest one of the structural features we've got. And uh, if you look at the volumes in it, it's 320 million most likely, and up to 650 million maximum. So slightly riskier, up to 19% chance of success compared to some of the, uh, the tertiary basin trends. If it works, very big. And if it does work, we have quite a number of other prospects that we can drill alongside it. We're also looking to drill the Solid Prospect. Solid Prospect has one little weakness in it, that it looks like uh, it's very close to the Bogal gas field. So I think there's a risk of gas there. But once, enough, once again, it's, it, it is the biggest prospect we've got in the uh, um, inventory. So uh, it's a strange structure called a trapdoor structure where you get two faults coming together with a very large feature uh, in both directions. And the most likely case, 400 million barrels the upside case is up to a billion barrels. So again, this one I'd say is a little riskier. It's got a chance of gas, but because of the size, I think we, uh, um, we were, were strongly considering drilling it. The bad news is that uh, Marathon won't be paying 100% of this. We'll have to pay half of the cost ourselves. But uh, all good things must come to an end. Um, in the Agaden, we're, we're drilling a well. Uh, this one's kind of a different one in that there's already two wells drilled on here. We know there's oil in place. In fact, we think there's a lot of oil in place, somewhere between one and seven billion barrels. The real question here is, can we get that oil out economically? It's generally fairly tight carbonate reservoirs that don't even appear to be very highly fractured. So uh, what we're basically gonna do is drill a well right next to the old discovery well, and we're gonna hit it with acid. Uh, we're gonna hit it with a fracking unit. And if we get any uh, encouragement out of that, we'll actually go in and try some oil on the wells. So that's the real key in, in the El Kiran field and the Ogden is trying to unlock the oil. It's basically trapped in very tight rocks. And we're going to have to hit it hard with something to, to get it to flow out of those rocks. Uh, this is probably our most difficult block. I think um, the odds are a little against us on this, but uh, we'll see what happens when we drill the well and see if we can get that, that oil to flow. Um, 